Obi-Wan Kenobi lived the life of a near-perfect Jedi and fought in the Clone Wars as one of the top Jedi generals. But his biggest failure and deepest regret of course came from the failure of his apprentice Anakin Skywalker. Despite loving Anakin like a brother, Kenobi couldn't prevent him from falling into the dark life of Darth Vader. This failure went so far that it was even the cause of his own death aboard the first Death Star, sending Obi-Wan into the Cosmic Force. He allowed the man he once trained to kill him. Because of this, the Jedi Master was able to watch over Vader for his entire life, including his most important moment of throwing Darth Sidious into the reactor shaft to save Luke. So what were Obi-Wan's thoughts as this happened? Well, hit that subscribe button and let's break it down. In Return of the Jedi, we see the final interaction between the Force Ghost of Obi-Wan and Luke on Dagobah following Yoda's death. Or so we thought. Obi-Wan likely managed to learn of the Chain Worlds theorem from Qui-Gon Jinn once he transcended into the Cosmic Force, allowing him to move between both space and time. As Luke gave himself up to Darth Vader, Obi-Wan watched their walk down the hallway and he even watched the young boys attempt to turn him back to the light side. Seeing this, Obi-Wan was heartbroken and distraught, once again filled with regret. He knew that Darth Vader's line, Obi-Wan once thought as you did, was true at one point, but not anymore. Seeing Luke utterly fail to turn the Dark Lord back to the light confirmed what Obi-Wan had believed. There was no Anakin left under that mechanical suit, only Darth Vader. If Obi-Wan still had a body within the Living Force, you can almost guarantee that a tear would be rolling down his cheek at this moment. Moving on from this, as Luke showed himself to the Emperor and began the battle with his father, Obi-Wan began to beg Luke to kill Vader on the spot. Obi-Wan believed that Luke's fear and attachment to his friends was causing him to stray dangerously close to the dark side, enough so that Kenobi was worried that Luke would take things too far. After Luke eventually came out on top from the battle with his father, and Palpatine demanded that he take Vader's position as his new Sith apprentice, Obi-Wan was shattered. He believed at that moment that he had failed the Skywalker family once again, and that all hope was now lost. The final light in the galaxy was about to go out, and this time there was no one there to protect it. Even with Luke denying Palpatine's request to join him, Obi-Wan believed that he was defeated with not a chance in the galaxy that Luke would be able to resist what was coming next. Next, things got even darker. Seeing Luke continue to refuse to join Palpatine, he believed that the young boy would be killed, while Vader would continue to serve Sidious. Kenobi believed that the darkness in Vader would again rise, and that his nature now was totally defined by the dark side of the Force. Because of this, Obi-Wan thought that Vader would just get back up and take whatever punishment was coming to him, as that was the way of the dark side. The strong subjugate the weak, but the weak still continue to follow, no matter what. But as this dread washed over Obi-Wan, something incredible happened. The Wise Master saw Luke being absolutely ravaged by the Force Lightning, but something within his ethereal being told him to keep his view squarely on Darth Vader. With his gaze locked on his former apprentice, Obi-Wan was stunned to see him lift Darth Sidious into the air, carry him across the room, and then toss his body into the reactor shaft of the Death Star. Obi-Wan was in total shock as he saw Vader fall to the ground next to Luke, not believing that it had actually happened. Kenobi was so sure that there was no good left in Anakin at all, and that his life was totally comprised of only hate, anger, and regret, that this just couldn't be true. But the Master knew better than to question the Force, especially given that he was now part of it, and he soon accepted this reality. He was relieved to know that Palpatine was dead, or so he thought at the time. Obviously, he would later come back through cloning and dark science, secrets only the Sith knew, but in this moment, Obi-Wan believed he was gone for good. Obi-Wan now watched on with angst as Luke pulled Vader's body aside and removed his mask. At this moment, a small amount of pain washed over Kenobi, knowing that he had failed him through one simple error. He had believed that Anakin was dead, and because of this, the Master had deprived him of his chance to redeem himself for all of those years. Because Kenobi lost all hope that Anakin was still inside, he directly caused that to be true. Luke was different, however. Luke's unwavering belief that there was still good in Vader was the only thing that could ever pull him out of the darkness. And Obi-Wan even admitted that Luke had just taught him this very important lesson, albeit in the netherworld of the Force. He was wrong to lose hope in Vader for all of those years. As Luke looked upon his father's face for the first time, Obi-Wan was transported back to a memory he had of Qui-Gon Jinn during his time in exile on Tatooine. He remembered finding out that Anakin had slaughtered the Tusken Raiders on Tatooine, and was very angry that Qui-Gon had never told him about the situation, because maybe he would have been able to help. He was especially frustrated when he learned that Anakin had already told Padme and Palpatine, and even another Jedi. Qui-Gon told Obi-Wan that he wasn't given this information earlier because he simply wasn't ready. He had not yet allowed the thought of forgiving Anakin to enter his mind at the time of this memory. Now that Luke had brought out the good in Anakin and saved him from the darkness, Obi-Wan was ready to forgive his former apprentice for everything that had happened since Mustafar. After this, things get really cool. 
In the final moments of Luke holding Vader, Obi-Wan quickly realised that his old friend didn't have much time left. He was on the verge of death, and without his suit, it was certainly coming to him. This worried Obi-Wan because Anakin obviously hadn't gone through all of the training that he and Master Yoda did under Qui-Gon Jinn's supervision, so he came up with a plan. The moment that Anakin died and passed into the netherworld of the Force, Obi-Wan called out to Vader and tried to gain a hold of his spirit. Hearing the call, Anakin's spirit responded to Obi-Wan and immediately broke out into a heartfelt apology and deep sorrow for everything that went down and for choosing the Sith over his former life. But little did he know, Obi-Wan had already forgiven him. With not much time to spare, Kenobi imparted the wisdom of Qui-Gon Jinn's training onto Anakin, probably through something similar to the world between worlds. This now meant that Anakin could now manifest as a force ghost wherever he wished and throughout all space and time. Being given such a beautiful gift by his master, Anakin broke down and demanded to know why he of all people deserved this privilege, considering everything he had done. Obi-Wan simply responded, You have proven you were the chosen one and have now fulfilled the prophecy. Anakin had destroyed both the Sith and the Jedi, leaving the Force in balance. Of course, Luke still existed, but there was darkness still lurking out in the galaxy to balance the Force out. In the end though, Obi-Wan admitted that Anakin being the chosen one wasn't the full reason why he passed on Qui-Gon's teachings. Kenobi did it because he still loved Anakin like a brother and wanted to give him one last little gift for losing faith and failing him. I don't know about you guys, but I think this is a pretty beautiful final moment for both Anakin and Obi-Wan, even though they'll both be together forever in the Cosmic Force. Despite all of the horrid and disgraceful actions that Darth Vader committed, Obi-Wan was still able to forgive him in the end after seeing Luke do the same thing. As Anakin joined Yoda and Obi-Wan in the netherworld of the Force, the two forgave him once more and he appeared at the Endor celebration with both of them. Although only Luke Skywalker could see the trio, nobody else there, and definitely not the Ewoks, could see them. Afterwards, Anakin asked Yoda and Obi-Wan if his son Luke would end up okay and not stray down the dark path like he did, to which Kenobi responded, he has been so far, so it is possible. Not the most reassuring answer, but the only realistic one. Sometime after the Battle of Endor, Obi-Wan returned to Luke to warn him about an impending threat gathering in the outer rim of the galaxy, one that would invade and strike terror into the citizens of the New Republic. You can probably guess by now that this was the rising threat of the First Order which was created by the chosen few Imperial leaders selected by Palpatine as part of Operation Cinder. If you don't know what Operation Cinder is, it was basically Palpatine's contingency plan for when he died. If the Empire couldn't protect him, then nobody deserved to have the Empire. And as a result, he used orbital weather changing stations to basically destroy any planet which was disloyal. Which, spoiler alert, was pretty much all of them. For the next few years, Obi-Wan's spirit along with Anakin and Yoda continued to guide Luke in his journey to rebuild the Jedi Order, including showing up at multiple vergences in the Force across the galaxy. Kenobi's Force imprint even showed up on the planet Gazian in its living sea, a planet which remembered those who visited it exactly as they were, and stored that memory in its depths. A very strange but cool mystical planet. But let me know what you think about this beautiful story. Would you like to see something like this replicated in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, or do you think it's already perfect? Thanks so much for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. If you made it this far, make sure you comment down below and say thank Mr. Kenobi. I'll be sure to leave a heart on it.